Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Life Beyond Six Feet. I'm your host, Damian Christie from Spooky South 507. And this week I have first timers of the show, Barbie and Buffy of Night Song Paranormal. Ladies, welcome to Life Beyond Six Feet. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We're excited. Absolutely. And I've been wanting to get you gals on for a while because you are based out of Middle Tennessee. So you're right down the road from me. Um, so that's pretty exciting when you have a uh, another local team that uh, is kind of well known in the paranormal community. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into this thing since it is two of you. Both the uh, the questions will be for both of you. So we'll just kind of bounce back and forth. Um, so to each of you, what, what kind of led you down the path to the paranormal? Like kind of what got you started in, in this field? For me, you know, the paranormal always happened around me. It never happened to me. It was always my family members lived in a haunted house. Never happened to me, but I had seen it. And uh, so I had been into the paranormal my entire life, um, but I had my first experience in 2016 at Octagon Hall. Mm. And that's what just kind of catapulted me into investigating it. So that's how it started for me. Buffy, what about you? For me, uh, I had grown up up on property property that had things happening. Um, one of my first experiences was seeing a full body apparition. I was maybe eight years old, nine years old, seeing a full body apparition, reaching out to grab my neighbor's mom. We were outside playing and we both saw it, which was the craziest thing. And there had always been inklings of it for a long time. Uh, what really pulled me into investigating, truly investigating. Um, after my dad had passed away and I started getting a lot of little hints of things that I thought were him. And then I called Barbie one night and said, Hey, do you just want to come over to the house and do some investigating? Because we've had, I've had voices, I've had shadows. My, my house stays active. And I want to kind of get to the bottom of this. Who's here? What's going on? Barbie came over one night. We had pizza, hung out, and investigated. That was kind of my first unofficial investigation. And from that point on, I haven't looked back. That was, what, Barbie, almost two years ago. I mean, I haven't looked back since then as far right. as investigating. That just kind of launched actually getting right. deeper into it that uh that first initial investigation i think uh, i've talked to a lot of people and they say once they actually do that first investigation whether it's an official investigation or kind of like you did like once they do that first one they're just kind of hooked and they're like that's that's i want to do this now absolutely yeah you you ch you chase after the, you know like when i was in that basement octagon hall you know, I was like, okay, I've never had it happen to me before. It's been around me. I've seen and heard stories from my family, my friends. It's never actually happened to me. But then when it did happen to me, it was the feeling. It was the overall feeling. I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. It was mm -hmm. the feeling. Right. And uh, you just kind of go chasing after that, you know, because I had always been skeptical. I believed, but I was skeptical. I was like, what's wrong with me? I thought something was wrong with me because <laughs> right. it wasn't happening to me. Right. But then when it did happen to me, I was like, there's something, there's something here and I want to find it again. Right. And, uh, you know, I've been into the paranormal, really into it since I was about 15 or 16 and never really actually investigated until like 2020 which i think it's when a lot of teams actually started because you had nothing else to do because of covid <laughs> and i'd gathered up some friends and we went up to brushy mountain state penitentiary so that was like our first unofficial investigation we had like no fucking equipment whatsoever we had like a rem not even a rem pod we had a emf detector and a digital recorder that was it and <clears throat> You know, even though we didn't really document much, all those personal experiences, I was like, dude, I was like, we've got to do this. We've been talking about it since we were teenagers. It's like now we're approaching 40. You know, if we're going to do it, we need to do it now. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how we formed. But, you know, always being into it is and having those personal experiences growing up. I had stuff seemingly everywhere I lived growing up, something would occur. And it was just always that fascination for me. And, uh, so, Barbie, did you have any kind of personal experiences growing up? I know you said you really got into it in 2016, but did you really have anything that you can recall? Because you said it was always kind of around you, but anything really happened to you, like, growing up? 
Nothing, nothing to me. Now I have been in rooms where things had happened to my brother, my cousin, my sister, my mom, um, but it never actually happened to me. I had seen their reactions to it, but I had never seen it or heard it or felt it. Um, and you know, who am I to, to tell them what they're seeing and what they're feeling, what they're believing is not true. I just, it never happened to me. So, I mean, I had been there and I had seen their fright and mm -hmm. their, the, the wonderment. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. I really did. I thought something was wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really did. Oh, no. Well, no one ever tells you that some of that is actually like the paranormal is beyond normal mm -hmm. or normal. Right. And no one ever tells you that some of those feelings and those things that they're not normal. You know, so when you do experience them, I experienced them. I've never lived in a house that didn't ha have activity. I've never lived or been places where things don't have a vibe and feeling. I didn't speak on it. Right. For a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. not to disclose my age fully, but, you know, <laughs> I mean, for roughly, you know, 40 some odd years, I didn't speak on it because you're either feeling like Barbie said you're crazy mm -hmm. or you just think everybody else catches on to that too. So it's just the normal. And then you start realizing that there's this mixed bag and not everybody feels it. Right. You know, that's like, I, like I said, pretty much everywhere I've ever lived, with the exception of maybe one place, like even if it wasn't nothing major, like it would be something like, what, what the fuck was that? Well, how did that happen? And, and now I've started over the last few years, pretty much everywhere I've worked, I, I've experienced stuff. And it's just <laughs> my co-host on beer, booze and boogeyman. They call me a ghost magnet. Cause they're like, dude, you're constantly messaging us saying this just happened at work or we just had this happen at home. And I'm like, well, I was like, I don't know if something's attached to me or something just knows that 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 I'm really into this and that I'm open to it. I was like, I don't know what it is. I was like, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. So now the decision to cite Night Song, how did that come about, Barbie? You know, I had always since 2016 chasing after that feeling again. Um, people knew that I had had investigated. I was kind of an independent person, uh, investigator, and I would bring family and friends along with me. And so I started night song as kind of like an event thing to mm -hmm. put together events and bring friends and family along with me. And that's how my mom got into it. You know, Buffy came along with me to some of the stuff that I put together. Um, and then, uh, I had joined, uh, a team, uh, in the Murfreesboro area. And after about six months, um, I ended up leaving and, and kind of repurposing night song as a team. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of switched over, but I had started night song back kind of when COVID was going around, you know? Right. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so we just kind of converted into a team. And so Buffy joined along with me. Um, my other best friend, Alicia, my mom came along and, and um, th the rest is history. I mean, now it's um, we've kind of grown and, you know, a big part of the community and uh, we adore this community. It's it's just the best. It really is. And right. um, no looking back now. I mean, we're just we're fully in it and fully invested and involved. And but, yeah, that's kind of like the birth of Night Song. It, it was an event company. And then we just kind of switched over to a team. Right. Now, now, Buffy, when she approached you and said, hey, I'm actually going to convert this to a team, I want you to join. Like, what was your initial reaction to that? Oh, there, there were, I didn't hesitate. Like, <laughs> I can remember the moment she called me, the uh, previous team that she spoke of that she was on. I was, I wasn't a member of that team, but I, I guess sort of a provisional member at that time of that team. Mm -hmm. I went along on investigations, but I was not an official team member. And when she called me and said, we're going to move to this format, I was driving down the road when she called me and I didn't even hesitate. I'm like, yes, I'm coming with you. Like, let's go. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. There was there was zero hesitation. That is awesome. And and something I always like to ask people is, is about their team name. Like what what is significant about Night Song? Like, is there a special meaning behind it or is it just something you kind of put together? Like what's what's the meaning behind your name? 
You know, it's so funny because uh, a good friend of ours, Jeff Reynolds, he's known in the in the paranormal. He's one of the volunteers, him and his wife, Heather, one of the volunteers at the the Harriman and, and mm-hmm. Old South. Um, he was like, are you a fan of Cinderella? And I'm like, the band? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, you know, because he's kind of like tatted up, you know, he's mm-hmm. a biker and all that. And I'm like, I mean, I know of them, but I mean, n- not a fan. And he goes, well, I was just wondering because Night Song is one of their songs. And I'm like. No, I didn't name it after a uh, Cinderella song. <laughs> um, so one of the, the things, like I'm a local musician in the area. I've got a, a, a band and we play around uh, a, a lot of places. And so I wanted to kind of uh, join not only the music aspect of it, but also the paranormal aspect. So when I was just kind of thinking of names, I was like, okay, well, usually paranormal investigations, we go out and we investigate in the dark, you know, mm-hmm. night, you know, the cover of night. And then um, song, you know, uh, I'm a musician, I sing, I play guitar, night song, and it just kind of grew from there. So that's really the the name. That's that's the the story behind the name. Well, there you go. And and just for for everyone listening, they did not name their their band or their band. See, <laughs> 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 they're so god dang, I can't talk today. They didn't name their team after a Cinderella song. There we go. <laughs> oh, I really did. When he asked me that, I was like, "The band?" <laughs> like, I mean, when, when, when you said that, I, I wasn't even thinking of the band. I was thinking of the Disney character. I was like, "Where's where is she going with this?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Does she name her team after a Disney movie?" No. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> that would be a great name for a Disney movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Now this really captured my attention whenever you guys like announced it because like I said you are right down the road from me here in Tennessee. Um last year you guys were named the 2023 Paranormal Researchers of the Year by American Paranormal Magazine, which I guess are now American Paranormal Press, I think they're called now. Um so how how did that happen? Like how did you guys get picked? Like how did that even come about? You know, uh, Damien, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Um, <laughs> they they did a uh, they interviewed us for uh, another month in the year, and um, we got an email one day and said, "Hey, you know, usually people are nominated for this. Um, you know, uh, you didn't nominate. You know, usually a lot of teams nominate themselves." Um, mm-hmm. But they they loved our story. They loved where we started from, what we're about, um, and the the advances that we're kind of making in the paranormal. And they chose us. And I'm still trying to figure it out because I'm like, there's so many great teams. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of great teams um, nationwide throughout mm-hmm. the world. And um, to be named that, I'm like, we could share this with y'all with everybody in the community, because I I really do feel we all are in it together. Right. And uh, so to just be the one named for that, it was like, we shared it with everybody. Right. It was all of our um, accomplishments. So, yeah, I mean, it was a great thing, but we shared it with everybody because you just don't do it by yourself, you know? Right. Takes a village. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And so they just kind of emailed you and said, Hey, we, we want, we're going to bestow this upon you. That's, that's pretty amazing. And uh, I remember when we got an email from them about asking to be on the cover of one of the magazines. And I was like, holy shit, dude. Because that goes, I'd reached out to them just to see how to go about getting our name listed on the back page. It was like, that's all I wanted. And then they were like, Hey, would you like to be featured in the magazine? I was like, Oh, okay. That's cool. What do you need? And then, that edition came out. Then it was like a month or two later, like, Hey, we want you to be on the cover of, I think it was like the all Tennessee edition. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, okay, that's, that's pretty rad. And, uh, but to be named the researchers of the year, that's like, that's pretty amazing. It it was, it was, um, I mean, even to this day, like I, I still, I'm left like, wow. You know, um, I remember calling, calling the team um, on uh, discord or I can't remember what I did, but <laughs> I remember calling them and I was like in tears and I'm like, I just, I can't, 
I can't believe this. Like it was just, I was shocked. You know, I, I knew that we were, you know, doing good things in the paranormal and doing it for the right reasons, you know, right. and, um, and just all the amazing team and the communities around us. And, you know, we're very pro, you know, para unity and um, charity and everything, every innovation, everything that you would want in your community. And to, to be the ones chosen for that, um, it's still to this, to this day, 2024, I'm still just kind of like, wow. <laughs> right. You know, but again, we share, we shared it with everything. There's plenty of, there's plenty of light for all of us to shine. So. And seeing yeah. that, that's awesome, but they just, you know, pick the team that, that does it for the right reasons and aren't doing it for clicks and likes. They easily could have, you know, messaged like that Sam and Colby and said, Hey, we want to give you this guy's, uh, this award just to get their name out there more. And but they would rather give it to a team that's actually putting in the work. It isn't just pretty much given this stuff because they're popular on YouTube. Right. You know, and that's the thing there's, you know, and you know, not to knock Sam and Colby, you know, right. um, you know, and I know, you know, they're, they're doing their thing and everything, mm -hmm. but you know, but they, there are people out there who just do it for, you know, mm -hmm. the views and the popularity and everything like that. And, um, you know, we really do it for the science behind it. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, but like the charity, again, uh, innovation, we're, we're trying to create our own uh, devices, um, REM pods. And, you know, we have some 360 things that we're kind of thinking about. Um, and just, you know, just all around really being, you know, a supportive group to everybody in the community. And right. that's what you have, you know, you have to do that. You can't do it alone. Mm -mm. You know, you, you need, you need your, your village, your tribe to, to come up behind you and, and you support them as much as they support you. It's very important. Right. Now, Buffy, when she made that phone call, what was your in initial reaction to what she told you guys? We all sat that video call that morning. <laughs> she's like, I need to get on a video call right now. And we're all like, I'm still in bed. So here we all are like my granddaughter was here. So I'm chasing a two year old, like trying to talk and I'm, <laughs> we're all getting on there and everybody, when she said the words, we just stopped. Everybody just stopped. Mm. It was that stunned silence of the reaction there that said everything. The right. silence said everything. Cause we were like, what, <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> And, and then of course, you know, Barbie, like when she said she was in tears, she's not lying. It was, you know, and then we, it was ugly. It was ugly we crying. In, we <laughs> it was ugly crying <laughs> tears through the whole thing too. I mean, afterwards it just, you know, after we kind of got over that moment of what, <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm much like, how you feel about how they went. There's so many people they can go and get because their traffic would drive it back to American paranormal site mm -hmm. and all of that. Right. And I'm like, how hard did they research us to get to here? Right. To decide that the standards that we uphold made us this. That's humbling. Like, we're just yeah, all, I mean, I'm still, again, I'm still, still talking shocked. about it. Yeah, it still gets, you know, the deeper you think about it, it's still today it gets, it's, it, it will make us speechless thinking about it. Right. Well, like I said, um, I just want to say congrats to you guys and, and thank you for representing the community the way you do and representing Tennessee like you do. Um, because there's a, there is a lot of teams in Tennessee, which is, mind blowing to me to actually think about there's so many teams just in this state and to actually see a team doing things the right way and doing stuff for charity and stuff and, and being so selfless that's just amazing well thank you i mean it, again it's just a really good community you know um here in tennessee i mean we're it's a haunted state you know yes. so and we're <laughs> surrounded by haunted states you know mm -hmm. and um 
and, you know, we're friends with a lot of the, the paranormal, you know, y'all and um, a, a lot of the paranormal teams in the area. And so we help each other out, you know, it's, it really is a community. So it's, you know, you can't think, you know, just of your team, you know, you just think beyond that, you know, the, the, you know, help out if another mm-hmm. team in the area is, Hey, I'm, I'm down to investigators. It's nice that they can come to us and vice versa, right. you know, and, and get people to pull in and, and get the job done. And right. um, people who, who do it for the same reasons that, that you do it for, you know, it's, it's not for the cloud. It's not for the clicks. It's, it's for the science. It's for finding those answers. Will we ever find the answers? I, probably not in our lifetime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It's the pursuit that keeps us going uh, in the community uh, to keep us strong. So, right now, a lot of teams don't like to do personal residences because, you know, one, those kind of teams are out there for, for the popularity standpoint of it. Do you guys like to do personal residences or do you prefer to do the commercial pay to play type stuff or you kind of do all of it? We do all of it. Um, you know, it's one of the thing. one of the stances that we have is not only do we like to educate the public about the paranormal, that's why we do events, um, but we also like to go into homes and mm-hmm. kind of disprove what they may think is paranormal. Um, and <clears throat> if we do find something, you know, maybe scientifically we can back it up with our devices. Maybe we can find some sort of um validation uh, for what they're experiencing and kind of help them cope with their unique paranormal phenomena that they have going on. Right. It's really motivating those, those people, but yeah, there is a lot of red tape involved um, Mm -hmm. when we do home investigations and we make them sign lots of documents uh, because, you know, there's a lot of reasons why teams don't do that because of such red tape and, Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, we're really in it for, to help people, um, especially when it comes to private clients and, um, so yeah, we do it all. Awesome. And I remember when we first started, we kind of went back and forth on whether we should do personal residences or not. And we had came up with, you know, some, some paperwork just in case and, and all this other stuff. And, uh, the first few messages we got, it was just kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't know if what you're telling me is legit because like the stuff they were saying, it's like, you're telling me stuff that sounds like the conjuring is happening at your house. And I'm like, we're just starting out. I know we're not equipped for that. I was like, we hell, we only have like two, two or three pieces of equipment. And I'm like, if this stuff is really happening at your house, I'm like, I don't know if like a, an upstart paranormal team is what you need. I think you need like, a priest to come in and exercise your house because if that shit's happening, I don't know if I want to take part of that because I don't want to bring it home to my kids. And so that's kind of another reason you know, we kind of shy away from the residences. I'm like, you know, we have kids at home. I don't want to risk anything negative coming home with us, even though we take those precautions anywhere we go, even if it's a place where there's no known negative stuff there. You know, my wife's like, I don't want to bring anything home with us that isn't already there. <laughs> You know, and so we've like investigated my grandmother's house, but, you know, we simply think it's family that's, that does stuff at her house. And we're talking about doing our first personal residence um, here pretty soon. There's this mom and daughter that, that work for me at my job. And uh, they've told me, told me some pretty gnarly stuff that goes on with their house. And the daughter, she's like, y'all need to come investigate. And the mom's kind of like, uh. I don't know if I want to really know what's going on. So we're not really pushing her, but like, you know, if he wants to come, just let us know. We'll figure out a date because she's like, she's into the, the paranormal stuff, but she's like, I don't want to know what's going on in my house really. And me and my wife and the daughter actually think it may have something to do. One with the, the, uh, the tent graves in the woods beside their house. And we, my wife kind of has a feeling it may have something to do with the deep freezer that's buried in their backyard. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> because when they first told me about that, I was like, well, how do you know <laughs> it's a deep freezer? They're like, well, you can see like the, like it's not, obviously not buried very deep, so you can kind of see a, a part of the top of it, so we can tell it's a deep freezer. 
And they're like, it's been there since we bought the house in like 2019. I was like, and y'all haven't like been cured. The daughter was like, I want to dig it up. She goes, because I want to know what, why, why would somebody just randomly bury a deep freezer that stopped working? And the mom's like, I don't want to mess with it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, because sometimes if you, if you, if you mess with that, you might be opening up a little bit. If, if right. there is something with it, you might be opening up something a little bit. Right. She's like, I don't want to know what's in there. I don't want to know why it's buried. And then she also has the, uh, I was like, well, why don't you know just just call the police out there? And they're like, hey, this is buried in our backyard. We don't want to mess with it. Can you guys come? She's like, well, what if they think that we buried it? I'm like, your fingerprints aren't going to be anywhere on it. I'm like, you guys bought the house and it was already there. And I don't know because they, the mom was telling me back, I was in like April or May when we had that last eclipse. She works from, she has a second job. She works from home and she's like, I'm just sitting in my bedroom working on the computer. And she goes the entire day. She goes, I've seen this man, old man walking up and down the hallway from the bathroom to the living room. I was like, well, was he transparent? Could you see him? She's like, no, he was solid as you and me. And she's like, he went up and down the hallway like all day. I was like, was that the first time you've seen him? She's like, yeah. She's like, I've never seen him before. Haven't seen him since. And she said her mom her mom lives with them too. And she said her mom was laying in bed watching TV and had rolled over. And when she rolled over towards her uh, bathroom that's in her bedroom, she seen this white face of this old woman just like, like lunging at her from the bathroom. And <clears throat> she said her mom kind of freak, freaked out a little bit, obviously, because I, I probably would too if I just looked over and seen a face flying at me. Um, she said her mom kind of didn't really believe in the stuff that there was like, occurring there until that happened. And uh, she said the daughter had told me that uh, it was like the first or second night they lived there. She got up in the middle of the night to get something to drink and went into the kitchen. And all the cabinet doors were wide open. And she's like, I've been curious ever since. She goes, I really want you guys to come out. I was like, look, I'm like, you, your mom gives me the OK, we'll come out. And I was like, but I can't just show up because... <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, show up packing all of your equipment like we're right here. so <laughs> rolling in cases and <laughs> yes so we're we're hoping they kind of give us the okay so don't the old man sounds residual because he said the old man never acknowledged her never looked towards her and my wife she's like she goes i feel like he may be buried under one of those tent graves wow. and then the old woman like she goes, I, I can't, I can't place it. Cause my wife's slowly learning about these abilities she has. And it was crazy. Cause when I was telling her about all this, she was like, can you, can you ask her the, the mom? She's like, can you ask her to send, send pictures of the, of the house in the bedroom and stuff? And my wife's sitting there drawing out how she's picturing everything set up. And she sends me these pictures and it was spot on, except it was like reversed. Like she was looking into a mirror and she was like, I've never done that before. Like she was drawing it as I was sending the text message. She's like, this is her, her bedroom's here. The the bed's here. The TV's over here. Here's the bathroom. She sent me pictures. It was just reversed. And, she, and my wife was like, oh my God. She goes, I've never done that before. So my wife's kind of curious about it too. Cause she wants to know who the, the old lady of the, of the face of the old lady is. So maybe they'll give us a go ahead so that's 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 pretty interesting i mean one thing with with home investigations in particular mm -hmm. um one of my I, I don't know if your if your team is like this but one of just kind of my rules that i take away mm -hmm. the client tells me all the activity they mm -hmm. tell me everything i don't tell the team anything i right. want them to validate it through the investigation. Mm -hmm. so there are many times I'll stay behind uh, at base and I'll send, Hey, Buffy, go upstairs, do a solo here. Mm -hmm. Vernon go over to there because I know that there's activity in those rooms, you know, but they don't know that they don't know what kind right. of activity happens in there. And here's a great um, example. Uh, Maggie mansion. We just did it. We treated it like a mock home investigation because it's one of those places that rarely gets investigated. Mm -hmm. They do have it open for investigations, by the way. Um, but, uh, you know, I knew all of the background uh, behind the the hauntings and, and, and different things that that happened in the house, but the team didn't. And so I sent uh, one of our provisional members, uh, Ty, uh, to do a solo in the kitchen area. 
And in the kitchen area, um, I had kind of wondered if it was residual because it's something that they always see. It's just a black mm -hmm. shadow that goes really quick out of a music room and down the kitchen, oh. like, and it's constant. Um, I was the only person who knew that. And he came back from a solo and I'm like, okay, we have little notebooks that Buffy, uh, as tech manager, she, she kind of made up for us. And he was writing down in his book, you know, what he experienced. And he was like, yeah, I saw like a really fast, like black shadow go like go like in front of me. And then he turned right. And I was like, great. We just validated something, but it happened several times throughout the night, which led us to believe it was residual. Right. But it's another thing. He didn't know that none of the investigators knew that. So it's like a validation thing. So that's why, right. I mean, not to knock any other team who tells, you know, because sometimes it is good to tell your team, uh, that way you can try and disprove it, you know, shadows mm -hmm. on the wall or whatever. Um, and, and we'll do that later on in the night. But uh, that was just one thing happened right out the gate within the first hour um, wow. of us starting an investigation. So, yeah, everybody does their home investigations differently, but that's kind of like how I run, go into it. Um, right. But I mean, that's definitely a different approach. Kind of go in with the rest of the team being blind and just kind of see. Okay, let's see if what they experience is what the owner is telling me. And that's a really good approach. I like that. Um, There's even Barbie will. She won't tell us in what they've experienced or the hauntings or, you know, alleged hauntings at that point as we're going in. But we, she, like she or somebody on the team will go through usually and do kind of a history run of mm -hmm. the location, like history. And I am, I joke about like, I'm the worst about reading the historical information, but I prefer to not. Right. I love going into any location knowing nothing. And then I'll go and research the history of the land and the home and things like that after. Right. I love going in knowing nothing. That's, that's how I am too. Even if it's like a well-known place where I know some of the stuff, like I don't really... I don't like to dive deep until after the fact because yeah. like, I don't want to get it in my head. Okay. Well at this time, every single night this happens and like, I'd rather kind of not know and then find out after the fact, well, hell I experienced that last night when I was there. So um, that's a, that's a really good approach to I've always liked the going in blind type approach. Cause like I said, if you go in knowing everything kind of like how I do interviews, you're, you're already knowing what to look for. And like you're expecting it to happen and it kind of, even if it doesn't happen, you may interpret something as that. I'm like, well, I experienced that even if it was not exactly what happens. So, yeah, I, I've always liked the going in blind approach. Now, if somebody wants to join Night Song Paranormal, are you guys accepting new members? Or are you kind of set where you're at now? Like, what if somebody wanted to join? Well, I mean, we always um, we always look to grow. Uh, right now, we're at five full time members, um, one of which is a provisional. We always bring somebody on for as a provisional. You know, even if somebody is uh, well known in the field or whatever, I really think that your energies with everybody else in the team has to kind of mix well mm -hmm. together. Right. Um, because if you go into an investigation and you two are sent on a duo and you guys just don't get along, it's just, it's not going to work. It's going to affect the the investigation altogether. So we bring everybody on provisional. Um, you know, we are always looking to bring on um, somebody uh, that has an open mind, uh, scientific approach. Um, yeah. I mean, they want to join, they can go to our website, uh, fill out the application. It is quite lengthy. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, um, but they are always brought on provisional. We always give everybody a shot, you know, because we do we do think, you know, everybody is is teachable. And mm -hmm. um, and and we also, you know, we may have been investigating for a while, but maybe they have something to offer us that we can right. learn from them too. And right. so it's it's really not one person running the whole show. We're all in it together. This is this is a team. Mm -hmm. um, so they just have to fit in. Well, there uh, you go. We're always look we're always looking for for new <laughs> right? um, fresh perspectives and um, and good investigators. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now to each one of you, um, like everybody always has their favorite place they love to investigate. 
So to each one of you, Buffy, we'll start with you. What's your favorite place to investigate and why is that? You just asked me to pick a favorite child. Um, <laughs> that's really, I mean, because th that's one of those I really, and it's such, and Barbie's probably going to say similar, which is hilarious. I love Octagon Hall in Franklin, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Um you hear it like you hear it from other teams that have been there and all of that, that something just draws you there. And it does. Mm -hmm. I love going up there. I love that. Whether I'm going up there to just hang out and back porch sit with bear and Beth that day, there's still, you kind of, it feels like it hugs you when you get there or again, and octagon was, my first official investigation. But the things that have happened and drawn me since are probably what makes it a little closer to my heart. Mm -hmm. It helps that I live super close to it and I can just run up the road and go right. see them. But, <clears throat> and really it's kind of a tie. Maggie Mansion that Barbie mentioned is a very, very close second now. It's a very similar feeling. It's, a warm hug when you come in there, the spirits, right. everything. So, but Octagon Hall is definitely, it's got to be leaning towards the favorite child of all of my <laughs> car locations so far. <laughs> now, have y'all ever experienced anything that not necessarily evil, but like kind of on the negative side, like they're like, maybe they're pissed off because you're in there or because that was, I've, we've investigated there once. And that was my wife's very first investigation. And whatever was in the basement that night did not like the females being down there. Octagon is one of those. And this is something like when you go up there and you're talking with them up there, <laughs> it'll be one feeling one minute and another feeling another minute. We kind of have a philosophy of if you were an asshole in life, you're going to be one in death. Mm -hmm. Yep. So... The energy that you brought to the world when you were alive that lives on as a spirit. And there is so much that occurred on, on that property in that right. area. And yeah, we have experienced the shift where one moment it's very warm, loving, and great. And then all of a sudden the heavy and we, and in the basement also, we have experienced that. And all of a sudden it shifts and there's this heaviness and we will basically just ask the question, do something to let us know that you just want us to go back upstairs. Mm -hmm. And usually something goes off and we're like, okay, we'll pack it up and go back upstairs right. and respect it because there's no point in making an angry spirit angrier. Right. <laughs> just because when they were alive, that's who they were in nature. So here they are again. So We'll just pack it up and go back upstairs. And seeing we haven't fully determined because when we went, it was I don't even remember who was putting on the event. It was a it was a public event, but there wasn't very many people there because it's a very small building. Um, so it was maybe fifteen of us there, and but they. We told them, hey, we're a team. We're, we kind of want to go off. We don't want to be with the group. So they was like, yeah, when we get started, once we tell the history part, y'all go do your own thing. We'll kind of, if y'all were upstairs, we'll be downstairs. So you kind of kind of have the run of the place in a way. And there was this one dude that was part of the team um, that was hosting the event. He kept kind of joining in with us occasionally. And he kind of he kind of kept provoking at times. Like, I don't know if he was purposely doing it or if he just was, like, unintentionally doing it. But, like, in the basement, I remember him saying, you know, this is, uh, like, the 21st century. Women have the ability to do things now, you know, unlike in your times. If you don't like that women can do stuff, you more or less can just F off. And I'm just like, dude, I'm like, you can't say shit like that. And it wasn't too long after that, like, my wife st started feeling nauseous, like she was getting lightheaded. Another female member, she was having, like, sharp pains in between her shoulder blades. And 
<clears throat> dude was like, oh, if y'all are being affected, y'all need need to get out. I'm sitting there thinking, I was like, well, if they're being affected, I was like, everything's been chill up until you started talking. And so, you know, we got them up, got them outstairs, got, got them back upstairs, got them outside. And uh, I don't think she's there anymore, but uh, Deborah, they used to kind of kind of help run things. She kind of um, done saging and done some some oil and all that stuff and and told us, hey, you, you guys need to go ahead and leave. By this time, it was like 1.30 in the morning. The rest of the people there had already gone. Like, they were just kind of letting us hang out and still investigate. And it was really odd because she was like, something's going to get you guys to try to come back. She goes, but whatever you do, just keep going. And we're like, what the, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? And so... Sure enough, when we left, you know, we punched in our address and it told us three or four different times to make a U-turn. And I'm like, if I make a U-turn, I'm going to be going north. I'm, I don't want to go south. I'm like, why is why is it telling us to, to turn around? Like, it was almost like trying to get us to come back. And we're like, no, we're just, we'll just keep going. And it was just really weird that she said that. And then, you know, our GPS kept trying to reroute us and get us to turn around. But we, we've wanted to go back. We had plans a couple of years ago to go back and stuff fell through. Me and my wife have been back during the day. We just, uh, one weekend we were like, oh, you know, kids are gone. Let's go. Let's just take a trip. And at the time we lived in Ashland City. So Franklin was only about a 45 minute drive. So we drove up like that Friday night, got a hotel room, stayed the night, went to Octagon during the day. And, you know, Deborah was still there and she had actually left us alone there. She's like, I'm going to run to town for a few minutes. You guys can just hang out. I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm like, and it, but it was weird because she was like, whatever you do, just don't go in the basement. And I'm like, well, now I want to go in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't tempt me. <laughs> right. And we didn't go just for the simple fact because, you know, they have cameras everywhere and I wouldn't want them to look back and be like, well, I asked you not to do that and you did it anyway. So, but it was really weird just being there, just us two, even during the day, but it didn't have that feeling that we had when we were there that first time. Like it was a completely different feeling. Like it was more, like you said, welcoming that time. So that's one of those places that, that has so many layers to it. Like you kind of never know which layer you're going to get from from moment to moment. So yep. it's one of those, you have to walk in open right. and ready to welcome whichever layer is going to <laughs> show up that day. Right. And even Bear and Beth will tell you too. They're like, the outside is one thing. Mm -hmm. Inside is another, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it does, um, you know, there's, there's definitely, it's on one of the parallels. Um, there's a lot of kind of cryptid things that happen. Um, and there's portals and you don't know what, what version you're going to get. And like Buffy right. said, if you're an asshole in life, you're going to be an <laughs> asshole in death. So you don't know who's coming through that portal. Um, but I can tell you that they're Miss Harriet. Um, one of the, the spirits there, uh, she, if you ask her to rally around you, she will, and she will pull in those troops to help you. She's done it for us and she'll do it for anybody else. So if you are experiencing anything, um, scary negative dark um just call on miss harriet and she will rally the troops and that she did for us so uh -huh. now is that going to be your favorite location to investigate or do you have a different one uh well you know octagon hall that's my ground zero you know i had that experience down in the basement um but again it's like buffy said you know it's trying to pick a favorite child you know um if you if you were to put it in different categories like what's your favorite hospital what's your favorite you know house what's your favorite you know um I, and i also love uh both ronnie d's uh mm -hmm. uh a harriman hospital old south pittsburgh we always get uh really good evidence out of those locations you can in log house can't forget about that um Again, it's like picking your favorite out of all the children. Um, but, you know, if you really have to go back to ground zero, um, I'm always pulled. And you're right, Damien. There's something that pulls you to mm -hmm. Octagon. Always. You see, for me, it's like there's not even, if somebody asked me, I don't even hesitate. Like my favorite place to investigate is the historic Scott County Jail. Like that place is, you know, I've, We've investigated it twice. I've been there, I think, two other times just during the day, just kind of walking through and stuff. And just 
the feeling when when you pull up. It's just like I feel like it's going to be a good night, and yeah, they have their kind of unruly inmates that can mess with you a little bit. Then you have your ones that are just just there, and they're kind of like, oh, you know, I'm here. Like the first time we went there, it was just me and my and my my co-founder. Crazy active through the entire night. But we never actually captured anything because it was happening right when we walked into a room before we like started recording with anything or right after we got through recording we were walking out. And it was like it was toying with us all night long. And there at the end of the night, you know, we're in the kitchen, got the door closed, and Josh was like, you know, you guys have kind of been toying with us all night, but we really want want you to do something to show us that you're here. And I'm sure you guys have probably seen this video. If not, I will send you the link to it. But right after that, you know, our REM pods are going crazy. We have an EDI meter that's kind of just going nuts. We hear a woman from the hallway say help. Walk over to the door, open it up. I say hello, and a picture goes flying off the wall. I've seen it. I've seen it, too. I've seen that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing evidence. And it was one of those things where, of course, it scared the hell out of me because I wasn't expecting it to happen. But at the same time, like my adrenaline was so intense. I'm like, holy shit, that really just happened. But then I first, then I initially thought, okay, where was I pointing the camera? <laughs> because I'm actually looking out into the hall when I'm, I'm not looking at my camera. I'm just holding it. I'm like, was it pointing at the ground? Was it pointing over here? Where was it pointing? And so we stopped like right then when we kind of calmed down for a second, pulled it up and, you know, we was able to capture it. And when we went downstairs and got Miranda, um, that was actually the second time that night that picture had came off the wall. The first time we were in the cell beside the kitchen, we heard it. We captured the audio of it, but we didn't see it. And so we just kind of, well, we didn't see it. We're not sure. You know, a lot of these pictures were hung up by Velcro. You know, somebody could have been in here during the day messing with it. Maybe wasn't hanging up very well. We just kind of don't know what happened. But then when we went and got her, and showed her that she was like, I've never seen that before. And she goes, you know, can you send me that video? I was like, I'll, you know, when I get home, I'll get it on my laptop and I'll get it sent to you and stuff and this and that. And I got it sent to her that morning, the next morning. And a few hours later, she sent me a text and a screenshot. She was like, I'm not going to believe this, but I think you captured an arm. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it was crazy because I showed my wife. Like that morning, like I got maybe two hours of sleep. So like I was like, I got to show my wife this. And she seen the arm on the little LED screen. I was like, I was like, I don't see what you're talking about. And then when she sent me that screenshot, like you can see what looks like that arm coming out from behind the wall. And I remember Chris had said. Uh, that next morning, they spent over an hour trying to debunk it trying to knock it off their self to get it to flip and all this other stuff went downstairs. We're pulling open doors and shutting them trying to cause a vacuum. They're like, we couldn't get it to re recreate that. And for that to happen and us to capture it, I, I look at it as, as sheer luck because like, I don't, like I said, I didn't know where I was pointing the camera, but then in my head, I'm like, well, damn, what would I have captured if I would have took two more steps out? Or if I would have been, one more step to the right would have actually captured more of a, whatever that arm was. So it's one of those things where like, I'm excited that I captured it, but like, damn, I wish I could have captured more. <laughs> <laughs> We've been there. We've done that. You know, it's like, you know, a cabinet door will open and we're like, shit, why didn't we have a camera on that? <laughs> right. And then we back. put a camera on it and then we, ne we don't get it the rest yeah. of the night. Like right. next time that, you're uh, back, you'll put three cameras at different angles and nothing happens. <laughs> that, uh, that happened to us at the hotel Metropolitan in Paducah, Kentucky. If y'all have never been there, you need to check it out. Um, we have not been there. Um, I have talked with the owner and, um, you know, we've, we've been wanting to go there. Um, maybe we can all go together sometime, and, uh, but yeah, we would love to go. I've ranked that in probably my top three favorite places I've investigated because it was just so active the night we went. Um, but there's a door in the kitchen that actually is like just a little small bathroom. When we got there the night before, you know, Miss Betty was giving us our walkthrough, you know, telling me and my wife kind of what goes on, telling us a lot of the history. And when, right before we approached that door, it popped open in front of us. 
And Miss Betty's like, that. You know, that's why I don't like coming in here at night, because this kind of stuff happens. I don't like being here at night, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, she closed it. And whenever she left, first place we went was to that door. But like, there's got to be, like, something in the floorboard that causes it to, to shift open. There's got to be a reason behind it. And we couldn't get it to open for nothing. Stomping on the ground, running in front of it, wouldn't open. So the next night when we actually investigated, you know, another team member had came up and we were kind of taking a break, but I was still walking around filming. He goes in the kitchen to get him something to drink and he walks by that door and it pops open behind him. And he was like, holy crap. And probably about 45 minutes later, he's back down there again and he's standing there and he was like, you know, can you just open this door for me? And he didn't have a camera. Which told him I was, in his defense, it was his first investigation. I was like, dude, always have a camera with you. Because like, you never know what's going to happen. And so he's sitting there, you know, standing in the kitchen. He's like, you know, whoever opened that door earlier, can you do it again? And I'm, we're in the hallway. And I'm, I'm filming and you can hear him in the video. He goes, holy fuck, like really loud. And we take off running and the door has just, we caught just the, like the tail end of it opening. And he comes walking out with like this look on his face, like, holy shit, like it opened on command. And the last part of the night, we probably spent 25 minutes in that kitchen, just with the camera on the door, trying to get it open one more time. And of course it didn't do it. Yeah. And, and another thing that I beat myself up about is we were upstairs. I was doing an Estes session in the hallway. So I'm in the middle of the hallway. My wife and Ted's is probably 25, 30 feet behind me. And probably about 10 minutes into it, like my left arm just gets freezing cold. And it feels like something is like caressing my arm. And I call out, I'm like, I was like, something's touching me. And then it wasn't 15 seconds later, it feels like something is poking me in my arm. And I was like, I was like, it's poking me now. And probably two or three minutes after that, we captured, uh, the clearest EVP we've ever captured. Captured it on our video camera. Like they're asking questions. And Ted asked her. For some reason Ted thought his grandfather was there with him. And he was like you know are you Pop? And my wife kind of whispers well who's Pop? And right there at the camera. You hear it clear as day say. That's not my name. And when I went. See I just got chills thinking about it. When I went back and reviewed a couple of days later. I didn't turn the night vision on. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I was so upset because I was like, what if I would have captured whatever was touching me on the arm? But then capturing the voice kind of made up for it, but I was still really pissed because I was like, man, all you can see in this video is the red glowing exit sign. <laughs> and I'm like, we've done that many times too. Oh, many to turn times. on a oh, camera. Gosh. <laughs> forgot to you know turn on IR. We forget to turn on the microphone. Right, I was yeah, so we've done upset, that before. But all right, <clears throat> now I'm going to wrap it up with this. To each one of you, what's been the most frightening experience you've you've had during an investigation? Um, Octagon Hall. Uh, you know, I. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of those, you know, where we had to call Her Miss Harriet in, you know, and, and Bear uh, had kind of warned us. He's like, something weird is happening. Um, don't know what it is. Um, I wouldn't say it was dark. It was just scary. Mm -hmm. um, and we had experienced something not intuitive at all. But before we went, something kept telling me spend some time in the barn, spend some time in the barn. Buffy had it. Um, Vernon had it. We all had the go to the barn and uh, damn it. We had to go to the barn and something in that barn. I don't know. It was just scary. It was, it was like nothing actually happened. It was the feeling. And you know, that feeling that I'm talking about, you just, you feel mm -hmm. like you're like something is just, it's, it's predatory. Like, it's just weird. It was a weird feeling. And we have never felt that at Octagon Hall before. And, and again, it's it's usually a really big, warm hug there. Mm -hmm. But again, we feel and that there's a portal there and something, some asshole came through and <laughs> was, you know, kind of threatening. And um, so mm -hmm. we went inside. 
and we called on Miss Harriet. But that was probably one of the one of the scarier moments. It's just the overall feeling of, um, you know, that you're not safe. But, you know, we didn't stick around outside long enough to figure that out. <laughs> right. What about you, Buffy? So frightening wise, mine would have to be close around the same one that Barbie just described. So I'll kind of go to startling because I've only had one where I dropped my backpack and all my stuff and said, nope, and just ran right off. (laughs) There was brushy mountain. I was in the hole. We were in the hole. So, you know, there's Mm -hmm. four cells Mm -hmm. in the hole. We had, um, one friend in the first, like when you come in the first one, I was in the second one, empty one. And then Vernon on our team was in the last one. And on my backpack, I have a vintage Casper, the friendly ghost doll, Mm -hmm. like pull string and all that. And he usually rides in my backpack. I strap him on where the uh, tripod holder is. So he's just hanging out back here, flopping around sometimes. I walk into the hole. I set my, I put my camera on the top bunk to where it can see the whole cell and out the door. And I'm standing at the bunks debating on where I'm going to get and everything. And out of nowhere, Casper's head goes, it just starts going on my shoulder. I have never ran out of a space. It, it, the startle of it got me. I dropped my backpack and I was out and I was like, can someone go get my stuff? Because I was like, I did pull it back together. I did go back in there. There is something, though, that's the second jail. There's something about, I don't know what it is, but Casper at Brushy, that was the first time he did it, and he did it with enthusiasm there. And at Old Stone Jail in Franklin, Kentucky, Mm -hmm. every time I would enter on the first floor, the cell, the area with the cells to the right. Mm Mm-hmm. Every time I entered that area, he would start tapping me. That's His little wild. head would start hitting me. <laughs> and we kept Vernon and I. Vernon is our master debunker. He mm-hmm. he tears everything apart more than anyone else. And we kept recreating. I wasn't hitting a wall. I wasn't anything. Look, Casper's head was just like, oh, hey, hitting me mm. here. And I'm like, okay. I get that you like Casper, but can you right. not? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's 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 ironic you say that those two places where that's happened at those two locations is the only two locations I've ever been affected emotionally at. Um, the first time was at Brushy. Um, it was weird because we were out in the in the courtyard, and the ladies who was kind of I don't, I don't remember their names, but they, they gave us the tour and everything. Let us use some dowsing rods. We didn't even know what the hell a dowsing rod was. And they kind of gave us a quick rundown how to how they use it, how they're supposed to work. And so my co-founder is using them, and I've got a digital recorder in my pocket. And we're just walking around. He's asking all these questions. And each question he asks, like, I just get more and more angry. We walk across the courtyard. I get We get into the gymnasium, and... The last question he asked, like, just set me off. I was like, fuck this. I'm, I'm done. I'm leaving. Storm out across the store, uh, the courtyard. Get past the rest of the people that were there. And I go from s- just super angry to I literally broke down crying in tears within a matter of about 45 seconds. And Josh was kind of walking behind me. And he's like, I could see your change just walking behind you. And when I went back and listened to it, it had kind of sounded like whatever we were interacting with was somebody who was put in prison for something they didn't commit for a crime they didn't commit. So I felt the emotions of him being angry for being falsely imprisoned to the sadness he felt for spending his entire life there. And that was in 2020. I never felt that again until last year at Old Stone Jail. I was doing a Estes in one of the cells and I could feel it coming on. Like I was starting to get just super sad and my legs started kind of twitching and I kind of pulled myself out of it, but I was crying and I was like, what's going on? I was like, I was like, I don't know. 
I was like, I don't know what, what just happened. We're like, well, let's get you out. I was like, I don't want to leave. Like, I didn't want to leave the cell. And so Josh pretty much just grabbed me and picked me up and toted me out. He was like, we got to get you out of here because whatever is affecting you, you know, it's not wanting you to leave. And that was a... Uh, never experienced that other than those two times. And it was super weird to be affected. Like, because I didn't think the first time it happened, you know, I would hear people saying, Oh yeah, it affected my emotions. And it did. I was like, there's no way, you know, there's no way that happens. And then to actually experience it and go through that, it's like, that is absolutely insane. Well, and the so, emotions yeah. feel natural when they hit. Yeah, right. It's, it's the first time I ever had that happen was at Harriman and the, the frustration and just uh, came from nowhere, but mm -hmm. it built up gradually. So it felt like maybe I was actually getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. But then when I left that area, I was fine. Right. And it hit me about 30 minutes later that I was like, Oh, that, you know, it's, a lot, there are so many like that that can just creep up on you and you mm. feel like it's your natural emotions, not. Right. And that that's become that's one of those things that now I have to concentrate really hard on. OK, I'm getting mad. Am I mad or is something making me mad? Right. And kind of. Yeah, start. that happened to me at, at Brushy. Buffy, you rem it remember did. that? You yes. had noticed. I mean, Buffy and I have been best friends for 19 years. And this girl knows me better than anybody. And just clearly, you know, usually I'm happy go lucky, you know, and investigating. And, and I, I was very clearly irritated for no reason. Mm. And I was like, and I was like, and I was like, I got to get out of here. And I started getting up. She goes, wait a minute. <laughs> like she had noticed it. She had, she had seen the, the, the switch. Right. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's happened to me a couple of times too, but it's, it's crazy that you mentioned brushy. And uh, because it happened to me at Brushy too. It wow. did. And it was, that was a, it ended up being a phenomenal session after that. We talked her into staying. We had the dowsing rods out as well at the time. And we talked her into staying and we started running a line of questioning that led us to why she was being affected. Now, obviously we didn't make her stay in very long. We were just right. like, don't leave yet. Let's, Get to the bottom of this. That was one of the first times that that was actually the first time I've seen Barbie or that we've all seen Barbie be affected like that. And it ended up being a phenomenal session. Wow. With it. That's crazy. All right. So do y'all have any uh, upcoming events or investigations you'd like to promote? We actually have quite a bit in October. Uh -oh. Um, so we have a charity ghost hunt that we are hosting for Maggie Mansion in Gallatin. That's going to be October 4th and 5th. We've got a couple tickets left for Friday night and eight tickets left for Saturday. It's very intimate. So we only open 10 tickets for it, mm -hmm. but it hundred percent is going to Jen and Denise, the owners, they renovated a uh, very historical building in Gallatin. So we have that. We also have uh, October 17th, we are co-hosting with the Black Wolf Paranormal at the Bell Witch Cave. Nice. Um, so we're going to be doing that on the 17th. And then we also have tickets for our Halloween at Harriman event on October 19th. And um, we are unlimited on that. So tickets are still available. And you can um, do eight hours of really spooky investigating at a location that's over 180 thousand square feet and it is active and we and this is open to everybody it's open to paranormal investigators uh people who have never investigated before um we're going to split off into smaller groups and so there's going to be plenty of room for everybody to roam right. and we also are going to be doing some free roam about three hours of free roam so people can go off on their own if, if they dare <laughs> if they're brave enough um but yeah, we would love to have y'all uh, and the public come join us at those. Now, if people want to purchase tickets, how can they do that? Our website, uh, www.nightsongparanormal.com. And the the links uh, will get you there uh, to the pages. So just go there and click on each icon for each location and purchase tickets. We well, have got a busy, busy October coming up and... Uh... That sounds very exciting. I haven't been to Harriman Hospital yet. Um, 
I've you been should to, join us. You should join us. I've Tickets are to, only ninety nine dollars. Uh, ninety nine dollars, and we're feet. We're it's all kinds of yummy snacks and drinks. So y'all should come join us. Now I've been to Old South Pittsburgh. Um, it was one of their public events. Um, public events for me is it, it, hard to enjoy because you don't ever know who's going to be there if they're going to take things serious. I know a lot of people come just for fun. But, like, I want to go and actually investigate. So it's like, oh, man. But, I mean, what we did experience at, at Old South was was pretty interesting. It was the first time I'd ever done an Estes Method session. I never even heard of it until then. And this was, you know, we'd only been a team for about four months. So I never even heard of it. And they were like, hey, does anybody want to do this? And I was like, sure. And when they told me a lot of the stuff that I was saying was correlating with what they were asking, I was like, that's, I was like, that's pretty wild. And, uh. And we've seen, you know, they talk about the puff of smoke that just randomly appears. You know, we've seen that several different times in that same room we did the Estes mes- uh, session in. So, but I, I want to go to Harriman. I know uh, this other team, they're, they're, I guess, like their home team, Fearful Encounters. Chris has been trying to get me to come out there ever since they opened it up. He said, man, you need to come out here. Y'all need to come out here. He's like, just just let me know when you want to come, and you know, I'll, I'll make sure you know I, I'm I'm here that night. And blah blah blah. I was like, I was like, yeah. I was like, well, we'll have to try to make it up there at some point. We haven't investigated in over a year, and because uh, like I said, the team kind of dwindled down, and we have our first. It's not really a team investigation, but it'll be me and my wife along with uh, the rest of Beer Booze and Boogeyman. We're investigating the night house at the end of the month, and. Uh, we're doing something that we've never seen done. It may have been done before. We've never seen it done. It's going to be an RPG style investigation. Like we're going to have cameras set up anywhere we can put them. You know, we're, we'll each have either cameras set up ourselves or something. And the people that had contributed to our, our campaign, which it ended um, a couple of days ago, uh, people that have access to it are the ones in charge. <laughs> Nice. So I love they, that so, so much. They, yeah. they tell us where to go. You know, they're going to ask the questions. We'll have like a chat set up that we'll be able to check in and be like, hey, Damien, go to the basement for an hour without a flashlight and just sit in the dark. You know, they want to see that. They can tell us, tell me to do that. You know, they're the ones in charge. We're just act. It's like they're playing a video game, more or less. And uh, so they get to investigate without ever leaving home. Because I know a lot of people want to investigate, but sometimes they can't either afford yeah. it or they can't find anybody to go with. So this kind of gives them that opportunity to do it from home. And like I said, that's going to be September 28th. And I, I think we're going to have... Gosh, I think it's a probably about 25 digital investigators kind of telling us what to do. So, <laughs> that's so cool. Um yeah we're hoping it's going to be a success and we're going to keep some of the cameras rolling throughout the entire night so if like somebody's awake at four o'clock in the morning and they're like they check in on this room and something happens they can put in the in the chat hey guys uh at 405 this morning some crazy shit happened in the kitchen you guys may want to check it out when you get up so yeah we'll we've, have, we've like, done that too point, we, so. we call them our phantom cams so we just basically we um we broadcast our dvr that's mm-hmm. all we do. Um, and yeah, they can just kind of go in and they can, they, they, they've done that for us before Wheatlands last year when we did Wheatlands and same thing, four o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Hey, something happened here and we can go back in the cameras and check, but that's a whole other element of having somebody tell you, Hey, go down to the basement all alone and <laughs> call them the shots. That's right. different. We haven't done that. <laughs> so it, it, it was something that that was presented to us by somebody like, Hey, why don't you guys try this? And we're like, well, that would give people viewing the chance to actually be a part of it instead of just watching it. Yep. And so that's, that cool. was, that's yeah. what we rolled with. And we're hoping everything will kind of run smoothly. Like Eric is going to, Eric is going to let us come in. I think about 10 30 in the morning and start getting set up. So we'll have plenty of time to get set up and kind of test everything before we actually go live. So, it's uh, we're all looking forward to it. Like I said, it's going to be all of us from Beer Booze and Boogeyman. My wife's going to be a part of it, and I think I have one of my other team members. She's going to come up and be a part of it. So, should be pretty fun. 
That'd be cool. Now, other than your website, where can people find you guys if they want to follow along with for the night song? Oh, we're everywhere. We're on, uh, again, you can get to the links. Um, I need to get on board with the link tree, but you can just go to the website, but we have Instagram, we have TikTok, we've got Facebook and um, YouTube. All awesome. under the name Night Song Paranormal. It's easy yep. to find all the way across the board. Awesome, awesome stuff. Well, ladies, thank you both so much for being part of the show today. That thank was an so honor. Thank us. you so much. I know we had a couple of hiccups there at the beginning and we had to, <laughs> you know, reboot a couple of times, but it's all in good fun. Absolutely. We made it. <laughs> we did. Look at we us. did. <laughs> all right, everybody. I want to thank Barbie Yay. and Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Barbie and Bubby from Night Song Paranormal. Um, give this team a follow on all their social medias. If you're in the area or if you're not and you just want to do some traveling, buy some tickets to their events they got coming up during Halloween, during spooky season. Um, uh, should be a lot of fun, especially the one at Harriman. I think that one will be a lot of fun because it's so big and he can kind of be spread out. So, yeah. All righty, everybody. We will catch you next time, ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody. Stay spooky. <laughs>